I call this meeting of the Perry Independent School District to order. Let the record show that a quorum of board members are present. This meeting has been duly called. Notice this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Open Meeting Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. Would you all pray with me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we're so very, very grateful for the opportunity you've given us to serve. We ask that, that you be with us this evening, that you be with all the, the members of our district, the students, the teachers, the administrators, the staff workers, everyone who has input on our kids, that their input for, for our kids are within your will for them. Be with us tonight as we make decisions for the district that also our, our actions, our votes, our directions, our discussions are within your will. In thy heavenly name we pray. Amen. Amen. Do we have anyone for open forum? Yes. Do not. Reports. Start with superintendent's report, Mr. Brown. Okay, we're going to begin with recognitions tonight. We got several recognitions that we need to make. First is going to be recognizing our all region choir. If I could have the, the choir, <laughs> the choir kids come in. Ready? We're ready for the choir. Bring them on. While they're filing in, uh, let's just let you guys know these are coming from our junior high. These are our all region choir members. Uh, these are ones that have either qualified for one or two choirs. They've qualified for uh, Saturday, October 14th, uh, going to the TMEA junior high all region choir. Or uh, they are also, we have students who have qualified for the sixth grade choir. So we're going to have them file in so that you guys can get a good look at them. Come on in, you guys. Um, I do have to say as a former choir director that it is a big deal when you make an all-region choir. It is. Um, these students compete when, from others or compete against other students their age for a spot in these choirs. Uh, and so it's not a small thing when you get selected. These are uh, selected as some of the best singers in our area, and they're going to be representing Perryton on October uh, 14th in the junior high all-region choir and the sixth grade honor choir. So I would like to read their names. And if I read your name, give a little wave so that we can recognize you. Uh, Riley Yateman, Reagan Yateman, Aileen Gaitan, Dianari Castaneda, Karina Perez, Alexa Urebe, and Landon Lynch, those students have qualified for the all region, junior high all region choir. And qualifying for the sixth grade honor choir are Xavier Hernandez, Zaley Liao, Carla Lianos, Cindy Shikadans, Emily Hernandez, Lizeth Hernandez, Faith Gonzalez, Abel Ramirez, and Adeline Reem. These are our junior high all region choir students and sixth grade honor choir students. Congratulations, Thank you, everybody. Thank you very Good much. job. We're very proud of you guys for your accomplishments. And the next junior high group we're going to be bringing in is our cross country boys. I'll be filing in here in just a second. It's a big swap. It is. A lot of them out there. A lot of, there's a lot of kids out there. <laughs> Our, uh, by the way, our junior high choir program is led by TK Aruda. She was here organizing the kids. And this is quite a crew coming in. Uh, I just want to brag on these gentlemen for just a little bit. The uh, boys junior high cross country team has done exceptionally well this year. They are led by our, our coach Stacy Erickson. And um, they qualified or won first in district. Is that right? 
they're here because they're they won first in district meet so we are super proud of you guys and they also won four out of their six meets and the two they did when they got second so Maybe. All right. Yeah, these, these are some of our stars here. And let me read. I'm going to read you guys' name when I read your name. Just give a little wave so we can recognize who you are. Aaron Sinisaros. You can do it this day. Okay. Adriel Ramirez. Ethan Ruelas. Jacob Erickson. Darian Russell. Joel Ramirez. Caden Hargis. Conley Felix. Caleb Manros. Alex Grajeda. Angel Banda and the Elian Ramos. Did I miss anybody? Okay. Congratulations, you guys. Good job. Good job. Good job. Very nice, gentlemen. And congratulations to you, too, Good job, Mr. Services. Good job. Good job. Good job. Can you uh, can somebody bring the principals that are out there into into the uh, have all the principals come into this area? Daisy, would you grab the principals? I guess one of these all the way. You yeah, come in, just just Everybody stand right over there. Keep, keep moving. Everybody in. <laughs> all principals. I'm a closed door behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Turn off the camera. Not first, I read the um, this is October, and October is Principal Recognition Month, and so um, we have we prepared a little presentation for our principals. You guys will give me uh, three minutes, about three minutes of attention. I'm thankful for my principals. I'm thankful for my principal. I'm thankful for our principals. I am grateful for our principals because. thankful for my principals because um they have changed the school they have helped everyone because they truly have the best interest for not only the staff but our students because he keeps us safe for, for leadership for guiding us for directing us showing us um exactly what it is to be a leader because she's kind because they know the name of every student on this campus because she's she cares for us because she is positive she has great energy because he is very good she makes good choices for us I am thankful for my principal because he protects us, loves us, and gives us snacks on Fridays. <laughs> he truly loves what he does, and he takes care of the kids, he takes care of the teachers, and he brings us candy on Fridays. Because he protects our school and makes sure that we're safe. Because he supports the faculty, students, and parents. Because he loves us and cares for us. Because he's truly passionate about what he does and treats us like his family. I'm thankful for my principals because they always make sure that everything in school is going well and they keep us safe. I appreciate Mrs. Wheeler and Mrs. Jenkins for all the support they always give. Because they keep our school safe. It's because they keep everyone in line if they need to be in line. And they support us. Because they make sure that our school is safe for everybody. It's because they are really supportive. It's because they always think about our mental health. I'm thankful for my principal because she's super understanding. She allowed me to come to school and she just she does a lot for me. I am so thankful for our principal, Shannon Jackson. Uh, she loves these kids and she has their best interests at heart. And not only that, she has her staff's best interests at heart. And um, I couldn't ask for a better principal. She's amazing. I'm thankful for my principal because she has been integral to supporting our school spirit and improving it. Because they are true leaders on this campus. Because 
she encourages me and is always supportive. Because they are so passionate about our students, our teachers, and just our staff. Is, they have our best interest in us. They are very supportive of anything that we need. Because they inspired me to propose to my girlfriend for homecoming, and they <laughs> inspired me to be the best I can be. Because they are making a better school culture. Oh, so, in honor of principal appreciation, um, you, just a little presents for you guys, Matt, enjoy it. Dodging me at United. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, that's good one. We don't have the assistant. Okay. Those are the oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I want to say that you y'all kind of tricked us about the students and staff who you, you asked for us to gather to speak. So. The topic was about the bond, yeah, so, so I didn't it know was a bond that update kindergartners video. could speak on the bond, so I'm <laughs> sorry that I didn't want to go to kindergarten staff. I could, could have. She'd have given you a graph. <laughs> but good job. That was sweet. So, so that sneaky. was, it was a little sneaky. We, we had a uh, video under the pretense of, of that this was a bond video, um, awesome. but we did want to... Uh, let them express their appreciation to you guys. And as you guys know, having a good leader on the campus makes a huge difference. And we have five good leaders plus our assistants uh, on the campuses. So you guys, thank you for everything you do for our kids. We appreciate you. Yes, thank you. Kids and staff. Yeah. And now, guys get ready for, now I think you guys have to get ready to give your reports. <laughs> Go. Campus reports while you're here, and we have added for reports that we have a place to give said reports. And that does it's not look like like a microphone is on. It is. Is it? I think okay. It's light. They're I just couldn't see the light. Not yet. Okay. The, I'm old and sometimes blind. Miss yes, Jackson. Yeah. Um, things are um, going okay. Um, we have 17 students. And uh, I want to share with all of you that the um, DAP issue for vaping has kind of settled a little bit. And so I feel like that's really positive. And um, we do have some other issues that have come up. Um, I shared with you that we are serving a couple of students from other districts. Um, and uh, I want you to know also that I've been in contact with multiple school districts in the panhandle and even farther south than that um older employees or ex-employees that have moved on and asking lots of questions about how we're dealing with that so i find it interesting that we're all talking and how this dap thing is going to work and so um just lots of little things moving parts and and getting to collaborate with other principals so it's been really uh, interesting and um we have We'll have eight in DAP by the end of the week. Yeah. So, not bad. You went to you. No. Thank you. Creighton High School. Things are moving along smoothly at the high school. Nothing new to add. Any questions? Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Weir, junior high. Um, well, I think you saw things are going really, really well at the junior high. We have district champions and honor choir members, and uh, the kids are just really performing, and, and we're raising those expectations, and they're rising to meet them, so it's really exciting. I was going to add something. Oh, the target improvement plan is ready for, for sending to, I've sent it to Region 16. However, I talked to Stacey Barnett today, and they have halted TIP submissions until accountability at their TEA is working through the accountability because no school district can set goals. We used our 
you know, our star scores that, that we've been sent are preliminary scores. So we already have that data in it and it's ready to go. But until we have official taper reports, we're not sure what that's going to look like yet. So Stacy said, we're, we'll just stay in touch and, and stay in contact and move forward from there. Yay, TA. <laughs> They're our favorites. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. I have a lot to say. <laughs> hey, it, it is all great at Williams. And I, I've been seeing a lot of things like that, but man, you know, that's what really matters. That That's why we do this. And I, it is true. I bribe them with candy and food <laughs> and I do love them. And our attendance is 98%. So it's Ooh, all great oh, at Williams. Well, I feel like I, I kind of draw the short end of the stick having to go after Reed with his 98% attendance rate, but our our littles at Kinder and Wright are, you know, working hard to be at school. They enjoy school and things are going great at both campuses. We are finishing up the first wave of testing for TPRI and Texas Kia. So those things are going really well. You know, there is so much improvement from all students from the beginning of the year to now. It's just like a different building when you walk in, especially pre-K and kinder. And so it's just great to see how much they grow each and every day. I mean, truly each and every day. So that video was very touching. So thank you all so much. You all have questions for me? Question. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Move on to director's reports, Mr. Kemp. Yes, sir. I don't have much to add to my report other than uh, we did get units set at the high school uh, last Wednesday. Uh, duck work's all done on the inside, still waiting on control people from Johnson Controls to come and waiting on the thermal duck that goes between the unit into the wall on the outside. As soon as all that's done, they're ready to fire up. And then it'll be 20 degrees. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be firing the heaters. Yes. Is that a supply issue, Alan, or just getting them up here? I guess so. I, no. I really don't have the answer to that, Bryce. Yeah. But they are in but the units are place. Here and they're on the the units are sitting on the roof. I'm sorry. The ductwork looks yeah, good. It does. It looks nice. I've seen pictures of the ductwork showing up on Facebook on occasion. Yeah, everybody's like, yeah. everybody's taking pictures and saying, hey, look what's coming. Yeah. So great. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be nice. Who will? Any, Any questions? questions? Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> IT department. I saw Ivan earlier. There he is. I really don't have anything else to report. Everything's going well. Questions? Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. As I say, Ms. Hughley is not here, so her report is here. If you have questions from the report, can uh, get them to her. What's a self-assessment? It is uh, a requirement now, especially if we're, we're right now we're being, it's called cyclical monitoring. That's what I was like, yeah. wondering what all that was. So every three years, um, TEA will do what's kind of like a desktop audit. It's a, it's a model audit. And so part of the audit process is you have to rate yourself on certain criteria <laughs> uh, on how you think you're doing on these things. And okay. so that's what self assessment is. And then all the information about the audit that makes sense. Yep. Okay. That's my question. Good service, Ms. Well. Everything's going good. Busy as can be. And we're working on doing a new commodity ordering system and it's way different but they took the middlemen out of region 17 and so it's all going to be on that so anyway but everything's going good how are the ious <laughs> same as always yeah but you aren't seeing any spike in that this over this time last year about the same, about the same. Okay. 
Charlotte came home really excited because it was corn dog day. So <laughs> the lunches are apparently hit. AD report. He said he is still at football practice. Still at practice. We have the report, which we can ask questions about later then. Yeah, we're doing something about it. Next up, communications and safety. Um, nothing on communications on safety. We did have a door open um, at the open junior high. Open. And it just so happened that Region 16 was here that day to do a door audit. But we are taking the steps to remedy that. We've already gone to the faculty meeting at the campus and talked to them about it. We are creating a training for substitutes that we will give to them on November 6th and um, just take care of that issue. How often is Region 16 coming up? I mean, that's just uh, last random. Yeah, just random. Last year, they came two or three times, I think. It's been um, once a year per campus. So this was, yeah. Been, yeah, this was the junior mm -hmm. highs. Oh. Questions? Have you had the timeline? Any? Oh, uh, yeah, I added the timeline in there. I'd send it to Mr. Brown and Mr. Beal just to kind of get a feel for what I needed to add because I've never been through a bond before. But if y'all have any input, send it to me. Um, and I'd like to put that probably in the paper on the website on Facebook just so we give some you know, the public something to look at as far as when we're going to spend the money, how fast the process is going. So my only input would be to spell out the acronyms. We are a world of acronyms. And nobody else knows what they are. Okay. So like RFQ. I was like, does that mean quote qualifications? Like I don't, I like, I know what it is, but I don't want sure. to say it. So, so it that's for, an easy fix. Yeah. For the, for the, the public uh, yeah. and those Thank watching you, online. Uh, I would say so right now bond process our RFQ which is called which is a request for qualifications and um, basically that's a letter that we put out say we're doing a construction project send me send us your uh, qualifications of your company and those qualifications will develop uh, uh, will narrow it down to uh, a few or two two to five probably that we ask for a request for proposal which means that based on what we decided we're going to do you propose as a company you propose what uh what plans you would do how much you would uh charge or, or what it's going to cost um so right now we're in the rfq phase that was that rfq has been posted in, in the paper uh we have not received any yet but um, it should be coming here very, fairly soon we should receive any rfqs that we get uh, and then we'll do the selection process so we are we are moving forward in the process and uh in uh, we will be working on putting some stuff on the website so that people can see what we're what we're doing. So that there's some uh, they can kind of watch the process unfold. This this part right now is a harder part because there's nothing, no construction happening. No there's, and so so everyone thinks it's stalled. It's not really stalled. We're, we're we just have a whole process of selecting a company and then designing and making decisions as far as finishes things like that. So. Um, so that's where we're at. We're moving forward. Other questions? Thank you, ma'am. Yep. Ranger Roundup. I don't really have any additions. Our CACFP application is still pending currently as of this afternoon. Um, so we're just waiting to hear back. I do have to resubmit a form that we've submitted several times. Shelly and I are thinking there's a hang up and confusion on that were two separate departments so we're going to reach out to region 16 and try to get that worked out and i know y'all probably received a notification on an investigation that we were under um, just anytime a child gets hurt on campus we have to report that to the state uh, regardless of how severe it was and so we had a child fall and scrape her um, chin investigation was closed out and there were no deficiencies or any findings so any questions Kids fall down a lot. They do. <laughs> they do. And our rules just keep getting, you know, more and more. But <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Curriculum and instruction. Yes, Good evening. Um, as Ms. Wheeler mentioned earlier, we still do not have accountability results. Mm -hmm. TA is saying first to possibly middle of November. 
Um, I really don't have anything additional to add to the report. And following my report is the required bilingual ESL annual program report, which it shows the progression of our EB or ESL students over the course of a couple of years. For the most part, there was a nice increase in all areas. There were a couple that, that did this. Um, and reading was good, math group were the couple of areas that we showed a little bit of a dip. Then you have science and social studies. Um, Ms. Campbell couldn't be here tonight. She did, she's the one that created the report. She talked about the number of exceptions that we were having to the fall or waivers. And a lot of that is due to just the number of new teachers that we hired this year that aren't certified teachers. And if you're not a certified teacher, you can't be an ESL um, certification. So. Um, working on ways to try to get those teachers certified to be more in compliance. Um, any questions on her report? So we have seven or eight bilingual classes? Yes. Yes, ma'am. And there's two bilingual teachers Except, that are certified. I think with the exception of kinder, correct me if I'm wrong, no, no, kinder has one. one. She just has one. She has to file an exception also for fourth and fifth grade, even though because we're not at that point yet. So yet. that's what kind of makes the number look a little inflated. But we still don't have, they're not all certified by right. bilingual and all by language. Yes. And how that's long? just a staffing, like, holy yeah. yeah, absolutely. How long do we get to keep filing extensions? How long will the state allow us? To I think we've been filing extensions now, from what I understand, for like eight years. So District of Innovation. If change staff. something, we're, as far as we know, we're good to go to continue with the exceptions and we're in that's just a really important program. I'm like, it is. And I'll double check with Ms. Campbell and, yeah. and, and get. I'm sure we're sure in compliance. Right. I just want we it to yes. succeed. I mean, ideally, you want that 100% without it out. It is just such a struggle yeah. to get the certified teachers, especially by Especially by And we have the stipend on the bottom. And for the, the, or the, not the stipend, the starting bonus. And I believe we've got Dawson now. Both. 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 We have a pretty good stipend. Stipend and the, the starting bonus. Uh, they, I, I would say, just because the, finding certified teachers, finding any certified teacher is pretty hard these days, yeah. yeah. especially okay. bilingual. Having waivers and exceptions is pretty common in bilingual programs to, to have a pretty good running total of waivers and exceptions until those teachers get certified. It's hard. Other questions? Thank you very much. See you for. Not too much to add. The expenses will look a little unbalanced right now just because there's a lot of expenses we have to pay for the year at the beginning. Nothing alarming. Um, food service, it's not as bad as it looks. Um, <laughs> we didn't, we're not going to recognize the income yet because we haven't received it and they're, they skipped over all this payment for some reason. It's a whole glitch there. Yeah. The federal they're working with the comptroller on. Um, cool. We've received about a hundred thousand in interest on the bonds so far. Well, that was as of the date of this report, and then we're sitting at about eighteen fifty-ish. Remember that eighteen seventy-four includes your half-day prepares and all that, so it's not exactly it's skewed. And I, I think just a little bit on the enrollment. Um, just to update you guys, this Friday is the Friday we count for the high school. Um, and last Friday, when I had uh, Mrs. Vernon um, give me the number, it was 590. We're going to make sure that, that we have cleaned up our attendance and, and enrollment this week to, to make it the most accurate possible. Um, I would say at 590, uh, I don't. I give it a 50-50 chance. You know, the last the last go round, top 45. Yeah, was, uh, was, yeah, that was that was about 40 more than it was the previous. So if they hold the same the same uh, pattern, it's going to be close. We miss it by 10. Yeah, it's not going to no. So uh, we're, just, we're gonna that we're gonna make cool. sure our number is as accurate as possible this week, and then that's Sad that's what we have control of. Then we're just going to see the things that we don't have control of. We'll just have to see on it. Okay. And I skipped over one item. 
to us. Which is Hi. Sarah's trip to go visit with the smart people. Skipped over two, didn't you, President? The resignation. Uh, we do. I do need to. I do need to report to you guys that um, uh, uh, Baron Lazardo, seventh grade man, has a resignation about uh, just two weeks ago. And her last day was Friday. Mr. Gillis and Mr. Brown both went to the uh, TASB convention here three weeks ago, and I asked Sarah to have a short little report, just kind of some of the things that they had seen. Um, <laughs> did I slip that word in there? Let me get a time me. Just some of the things that they saw going down there, um, some of the ideas maybe that they saw in business with some of that. I think a lot of times events like that, sometimes just visiting with other other attendees, you learn as much or more than you do in the session. You learn quite a lot. Okay. Do you have anything you want to say about what you um, Probably, probably, there was lots of discussion, uh, and probably the most useful discussion that uh, I went to, or the most useful session I went to, was from um, it, was, it was a presentation on the, the Charles Butts Foundation, who is the guy that owns HEB, and every year they do a survey on teacher satisfaction, uh, teacher morale, basically. And I found that was very interesting. Um, there was some surprising data in there um, that. Uh, some surprising, some not. Again, some of the uh, the anchors on teachers' morale at the moment are feeling overwhelmed with many things to do. Uh, teacher pay was on that list, but it wasn't number one on the list. Uh, it was mainly not having time to uh, to accomplish the things that they need to to accomplish or the things that they're being asked to accomplish, and uh, having. Uh, just a general satisfaction with the way their school or education is going. So um, I found that data very interesting, and want to well, I want to do what we can here at Perry tonight to do some of that for our teachers. That's great. Um, okay. Will you pass those? Did everybody get yep, one? There we go. Okay. So I'll go in order. The delegate meeting is the part that um, super secret just for school board members. I guess. Um, and the main takeaway is that the agenda for TASB is made at these grassroots meetings um, between January and March. Here's the flow. If you want to pass that around um, of where it all comes from. And it comes directly from members. And if the data was given is right, 78% of school districts are rural. So if actually every school district showed up, Austin wouldn't have to. And there's grassroots meetings start, you don't even, so that starts it without even having to go to this delegate meeting. Um, so I think it's really important that we have a representative or two or five go because the only one that went last year when they set the agenda, they do it every two years, um, was maybe Canyon and Amarillo ISD. So again, the big schools in Region 16. Region 16 tends to be more conservative, obviously, um, but I think it's so important we go. Um, in the actual delegate meeting of a regional caucus that starts with what? <laughs> uh, and actually a region 16 delegate proposed an a, amendment to one of the agenda items that we were going to pass and it passed. She made it more conservative and everyone passed it overwhelmingly. Um, and then a lot of the things that TASB or the TASB leadership decided to pass all together actually people filed to pull them individually and talk about them individually and they were either made a lot more conservative or they got squashed um and surprisingly even dallas isd was fighting against austin austin just has this own agenda and they have the staff to be pumping all these out that's why they have more paperwork in here than everybody else they're the only ones playing ball but everybody else was kind of fighting back and mostly it was successful and they actually pulled one that wasn't recommended and it passed the problem with all that is, okay, does it matter what's in here if the um, lobbyists aren't necessarily successful? So that's the next step. But at least getting the agenda right is the first step. And then when you figure all that out, go on there. And those rumors about Hasby being liberal and squishing um, parent comment and stuff, 
it sounds like that's coming from a couple of school districts that were tired of paying TASB fees and this other company that is saying, oh, TASB is doing this and this and this, and we can do this for you cheaper. So they signed up with them and now they're, those school districts are mostly headed back to TASB because those companies were not. So there's the um, dramatic part, but um, they will release when those meetings, the grassroots meetings, in the region are here at the first uh, of November, so I will update everybody when those are. Um, so as far as sessions, stuff that uh, I went to some teachworthy pace um, alternate certification stuff and passed that off to Mr. Brown. And um, one of the more interesting classes I went to was about facilities maintenance and resources. And it was shocking to me that they used to be able to build a new high school for what we're renovating like five years ago. So the cost of all everything is up so high that the value of our maintenance department is increasing because if they ain't broke, don't fix it. We don't have the money to fix it. So um, we also need to communicate um, with the community, and we're doing a good job with that with communication. So they trust us that we are managing that bond. Well, because so much of it is paperwork and um, permits and things like that, that if they don't trust us, we got no chance of ever doing it again in short term. And we'll need to. We've got other old buildings. Um, so we are grateful for our maintenance staff that has strung those older buildings out as far as they possibly can and for what they are doing for us currently. So I was grateful having good staff because that was overwhelming. It was a packed room um, that everyone was saying having having those people is a life changer. Um, Region 16 did a presentation. They were part of a presentation, Raising Rural Voice Through Collaborative Partnerships, um, basically talking about CET co-ops for smaller areas. We're a little spread out, but it could work. Um, we'd offer more student things, hearing with Spearman, Canadian, things like that, and they bus kids back and forth. So one school have welding, one won't. <laughs> Brittany's like, please don't do that. <laughs> the finance, but it's done through like a nonprofit. The school doesn't really run the money. Um, but Region 16 seems to be the source for that. So if they want to do that. They it's, find a way to count all those high school kids in our enrollment. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can we get those um, Canadian football players? Um, and then there are some lead rule initiatives, but those are, um, they're trying to promote rural schools and what they're doing. So. Um, Mr. Brown has contacts with all of those. If we want to add that to his to-do list, we're trying to recruit him to the second group of we rule um, class. And but I was like, mm, we're doing a bond and some other things. But um, they were the ones that had that. Seventy-eight percent of school districts are rural, but we get one fifth of the funding. So we need to go to these things and and fight basically for our half and get all the other rural schools to go and fight for us. Um, the Classroom to Capital Belton ISD makes these amazing little fact cards that people and mainly school board members can walk around with. Talk about, I only got one, so we get to him when we're done. And then they have a legislative priority day about for everyone to talk about. All this goes back to the the vouchers and it's, it's mainly us versus TEA or the legislature. So school board's way to push back is either through advocacy like this or um, you know, TASB through them, but they, they're doing it on their own and they're close to Dawson and drive down, but they get these together every year and it gives everybody talking points and hours school board members to have a uh, more centralized voice sound. You always good when we sound more educated when people ask the question about things we ought to know. Um, and they have the sources to do that research. Um, there's also, this is in your little packet. This is a board visibility spreadsheet. They get at every meeting. Um, so it's everything going on in school. They go to their city council meetings and support their community. Also, those ties are important. Harrington, they're really important right now after what all has happened. Um, so instead of having all the board members go to all the same things, they don't really assign it, but it's like, hey, who's going to go to this? And they try to attend more community events instead of just the choir concert here or everybody being able to put one in there. Um, and so they've got board member initials and the events and time and date. And my question was, how do y'all have time for all of this? We all just share. I mean, they're not all going to the same things. They go to two things a month. Most of them, unless some of them work there or whatever. 
Um, so I thought board visibility might be a good thing um, to work on for us long term. Um, also, it opens us up to questions, but it also keeps us knowing what's going on in the community especially right now. And back to the legislative thing with this, if we want our legislators to do something, we need to talk to them, not just our staff because we are the people that voted them in and we'll vote them in or out again and they're more apt to respond to us and right now Perryton has unfortunately really good name recognition because we had really big um, politicians come and visit for the tornado so when we have maybe a groundbreaking for the bond they love a photo op we really ought to invite them back and be like hey look we're rebuilding you should come and they come and that's how you build that relationship so you can make the phone call going this is really bad for us or this is really good for us we support you things like that um all these things take time it doesn't happen overnight but i thought that fact sheet was just like really cool um so anytime you get to talk to you know radio or anything having that in your pocket you're like hey i don't know but i have the, the text or remember it all and the whole i mean it's not just for board members a info card for staff ending out at meetings or wherever would be really cool um, I went to a security meeting, which was really depressing, um, about Uvalde. Um, they emphasized locked doors, hardened windows around the doors, not necessarily people coming through windows. Everyone always talks about being afraid of them shooting out a window and coming through. And like 98% of the time, that's not an issue. It's the windows around the doors, and we're already doing a good job of that. And then there were some safety things we'll talk about in closed session that not everybody with our devices um also there is a national safety security protection association that will do a free assessment when you're doing a remodel okay, that information mr brown and um Stacey and Brittany can look that up and see i mean it can't hurt to have them come if we totally disagree with what they do but rather than paying for that assessment also that we had talked about that expert coming the criminal criminologist um this guy's ex-military, he comes and debriefs and analyzes all these shootings. So I met, it sounds like they know what they're talking about, but you know how salespeople are. So, um, but I thought that was a good takeaway to have call that organization. It is a .org. They're not a for-profit. Have them come look at our two buildings and say, what would you do security-wise? Um, my favorite uplifting thing um, which was in a lot of the district improvement plan or campus improvement plans and our district improvement plan are talking about teacher retention and recruitment and it was called taking care of our crew um, retention is recruitment and talked about positivity and teachers knowing their why that's the big push right now is know your why remember your why they know their why we need to they struggle with the how the time um, getting everything done the compliance stuff the state stuff like we're, we don't know what's going on with TEA. So our job in this room is the how, how they get it done um, and to help them with that. We don't really need to remind them that kids are great and education is important, but we need to give them faith in education again. Um, and that's what this they focused on. And these two women are all about it and they'll come and do PD related to it actually. Um, and we talked about that the HEB survey of teachers that 98% of them said a positive work culture and environment was important more than pay scale. Um, the thing I really thought was cool, they did t-shirts on their campus, more cowbell t-shirts. Like if you were a cheerleader and it's staff, you're nominated and you could be a bus driver, a substitute, a cafeteria leader, maintenance, maintenance worker. You are nominated by your staff every month, by the whole staff. And then you get to wear that shirt on Mondays with jeans. Um, but you have to be like all out for education. It was really good for their, in addition to all this training, it was good for morale and motivation and work culture and just positivity. And I know that the individual campuses are doing a lot of that, but I think an alignment campus or district wide, you know, instead of doubling all the effort might be valuable. But the Cabell shirt, everybody, overwhelmingly was like, yeah, you just make it your red or blue or whatever your school. And people were begging by the end of the year, like, how do I get a cowbell shirt so you can wear jeans on Monday <laughs> or whatever. Um, so there's my very short 30 second spiel. Um, it was really valuable going, talking to other, other people and overwhelmingly, no matter what region people were from, um, they told me region 16 and region 17 
are going to keep us out of trouble downstate. Like we have to show up and we have to fight because we'll dig our toes in. And a lot of the other places are, are not as tough as us. So it is important that we keep doing what we're doing. They, so they appreciated us. And so many people checked on us about the tornado. And I was surprised. People in Corpus Christi were like, how are you doing? So um, that was cool. Everybody cares about kids. And we all had, have different problems. Nobody can hire anybody. There are no teachers. Um, and a lot of these same things y'all talked about here. ESL, bilingual certification. It's just hard, but we have to figure out how all together. And I, I believe in this team and our, our new leaders, and I think that's a big part of the how. Yeah. Any questions? Don't send Sarah to any conferences. She'll make us wear the ugly shirt. But oh, they did have polos made. I was like, I think we should get some PISD shirts. They might be better than the ugly shirts on the okay. picture on the stairwell. Polos were cool. That was my threat. They were just like Longhorn Texas flag, like really, really ugly party shirts. This I'm, one school board floor so they could find each other at the conference. I said, y'all better come next year. I'm not please. sure they make them in my size. Oh, they do. They might be a little big for us. <laughs> None of these men were petite. They were some big old boys from downtown. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, it's there are a lot of opportunities like that that, that for the most part we don't take advantage of. No, but you did, and, it was and good. Uh, we appreciate the information. Be able to be able to come back. There's a lot of again just just being able to meet and greet with other other board members from around the state. And it's an opportunity to learn. How do you take care of this issue? Those types of things. I so, appreciate you taking the time to be able to go down there. Is that everything on our list? I believe so. Okay. Board will now convene in a closed meeting to discuss the following item post on our agenda as allowed by Texas Government Code 551.074 Personnel Matters, 551.076 Security Devices, and 551.071 Attorney Consultation or Matters Involving Attorney Client Privilege. No voting will take place during a closed meeting. Any action the board wishes to take as a result of discussion in closed session will take place after the board reconvenes in the open meeting. It is now 647.